Hello everybody! Wait, what, what am I doing? <laughs> this is such a bad start to the video! We'll start again. Welcome back! I've just spent the last two weeks at sea. Oh no, going the wrong way. I've been living on a wooden traditional Polynesian boat and we've been sailing down the coast of Portugal. We've just made it down to the very end of the first leg of this journey because this boat's gonna continue all the way to the Caribbean. And it's that boat right there. Isn't it beautiful? If you haven't seen them yet, I've made a bunch of videos about the adventure on my YouTube channel. And I've been sharing a lot on my Instagram stories as well. And I have received so many questions from you guys. So I'll be answering a bunch of them today. Ugh. If I manage to get on this boat. Question number one, have you ever sailed before? And I think it's pretty clear that, uh, that the answer is no. I'm just going round in circles. This is like reverse parking and I can't drive. Ta-da! We've made it! <laughs> We're gonna tie her up and then uh, answer the rest of the questions. Question number two. How did you find the boat slash come across this opportunity? First of all, I always wanted to learn how to sail, but I just never did because I never had a really, really strong pull towards it or an opportunity to learn how to sail. And two years ago, I was on a gap year after I graduated from law school and I met this girl, her name is Judith, and she told me about a website called Crew Bay. And Crew Bay is kind of like Airbnb. It's a website where you can find a boat if you're a crew member and if you're a boat owner, you can find a crew. But at the time I had other plans and then COVID hit, so it, I just completely forgot about this website to be fair. And then a couple months ago, I was just itching to go on an adventure. I've been editing for months and months and months. I haven't filmed since I was in Lebanon. I was just, yeah, I was just seeking an adventure. And then I remember this website, went on it, created a profile. The very first listing that I saw was this boat. And when I read the description, I was just like mind blown because that is exactly what I was looking for. So I just booked my ticket and came to Portugal and then uh, I found my way here. Okay, hold on. I want to give a little disclaimer here. So when I go on trips or adventures like this, I usually go off of my instincts or my intuition. And it's not really something that I can explain because it's based on so many things like my past experiences and my view on the world and my personality. So this is just me sharing my personal experience in the same way that I would never tell someone to get blindfolded and dropped off in a foreign country where they don't speak the language without any money or a phone. This is not me telling you what to do. That's why I'm including resources and links in my description for anyone who's interested. And yeah, wish you safe travels and happy sailing. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> oh, it's getting a bit chilly because the sun is disappearing behind the clouds. Question number three, are you on your own? Am I on my own? Yes and no. So I came here by myself, but the amazing thing when you travel alone is that you meet so many amazing people. Like when I came to Portugal, I had no expectations about the people here. And of course now the sun's coming out. <laughs> Every single encounter I've had up until I came onto the boat was really, really nice. From the pilots in the plane who invited me to a cockpit landing. Oh my gosh, they're talking to the people on the ground and I can hear everything they're saying. It's so interesting. To my friend Danielle who hosted me in his house. Danielle here is kindly giving me a lift to the students that I met in the park or the girls that I met on the, the train everyone has been so so friendly and i'm really grateful uh, for these experiences and this is what happens when you're traveling alone you just by yourself so it's so much easier to talk to people and when it comes to the boat i am not alone so captain lives here permanently he's been living on this boat for 10 years now and sailing all over the world for i don't know how maybe hundreds of years <laughs> he's a little bit camera shy it's funny girl with the camera in your face 24 7. Bye. but i think I can convince him to film an interview with me and just sit down and answer a bunch of questions because he's such a fascinating man. There's also a lot of crew members that come on here. So when the boat is going to cross the Atlantic, there's going to be more than 10 people on board. Right now, there's only two crew members. So there's me and then there's Anushka. Next question, question number four is, where do you sleep? I have received this question so many times and this is something that I was so curious about as well before coming on here. I actually sleep right here, right where I'm sitting. Well, under where I'm sitting, under the deck. You know what, let me just show you, come. Hello and welcome to my room. My bed, my bunk, my quarters, whatever you want to call this. Ah, this is where I spend most of the uh, night hours. It's uh, very comfortable. I banged my head a couple times, but I learned my lesson. Sometimes it gets very cold at night. So I have lots of cozy blankets. It's honestly just a normal bed. Um, it's really comfortable. And when you're laying down, it's actually kind of nice. You have room to move around. I sleep very well when we're sailing because the little rocking sensation is actually pretty soothing. 
Question five. Is the boat safe? I have a question for you. Yes. Is the boat safe? Yes, the boat is safe. It doesn't sink. It's made out of wood. So it could be full of water and you can still live on deck. It's been seven times across the Atlantic and uh, I can say that boat by myself. Plus we have uh, EPIRBs, we have life jackets, two dinghies, we have GPS, we have weather. The boat's safe. Great. All right, there you have it. Question number six. Don't you ever get bored? And what do you do when you're not sailing? This is an amazing question. It is something that I wondered a lot before I came on here because I was just curious, like, what do you do when you're not sailing? When you're at sea, you have so much time because this boat practically sails by itself when the wind conditions are right. So we talk. Hey, I've got nice hair, do you know that? It's still my own color. My own color. Wow! And it's long and it's... Looks a bit greasy, but uh, that's life on a boat. We've had so many amazing conversations, and especially when you have a captain who has so many life experiences, you can just talk forever and ever just listening to him speaking. There are no words of wisdom. Google it! <laughs> If you want wisdom, Google it. We read. I didn't really expect this when I came on here, but there is an entire library of really good books. Who knew that there were books on a boat like this? I had no idea because I thought it would get wet or damp or damaged. So of course you don't bring books on a boat, but apparently I was wrong. What else do we do? We play games. We have a lot of card and board games. So we've been playing a lot of backgammon, a lot of uh, Scrabble. We have no wind, so we play Scrabble. Im is not a word. If <laughs> Im is not a word, I will eat this pear. <laughs> <laughs> You already started eating it. <laughs> You're not gonna find it because it's not there. Verdict? I'm gonna eat this apple and I'm gonna apologize. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> Sometimes we just watch the horizon and observe nature. Like right now, we are in the middle of a natural reserve on the island of Culatra in the south of Portugal and it's just absolutely stunning. I'm gonna show you how we get onto the boat. If we don't have a dinghy to get on or if we can't just climb up from a marina, a harbor, a jetty. So this is how we get on. And that's it, now I'm on the boat. Bird watching. I look at artifacts on the boat. There's so many cool trinkets and things collected over the years. Every single day I find something new. It's really interesting to look at them or ask questions about these things. What is there to do in Tuvalu? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We've got one road that goes from one end of the island to the other, which is about five k's long. Just get a motorbike and go across. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing you can do. Where when the aircraft comes, somebody with a bicycle and a bell drives around and goes bling 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 because in at night when it's hot, everybody sleeps on the tarmac. So all these things we can do while we're sailing, but when we're anchored, like right now, we also very often go on land and explore. We do laundry, we do food shopping. We also meet a lot of other boat owners and travelers because this boat often strikes curiosity and people come and say hi. It's the most beautiful boat I ever seen. You make it? Really, yeah. No way. It's a nice way to meet other travelers. There's plenty of things to do, so. You never get bored. <laughs> Next question. Did you get seasick? This is something that I was kind of nervous about before coming on here. One thing that I do need is seasickness pills because I'm really scared of getting seasick. I thought, oh my gosh, people on boat get sick all the time. So I brought seasickness tablets with me as well. I got the seasickness tablets. They cost me 10 euros. Hopefully I won't need them, but if I do, then they better work. <laughs> no, I did not get seasick. I was very lucky for the whole two weeks. I didn't get sick once. I did feel a little bit nauseous during our first night sail. I I feel a bit nauseous, like I feel like I'm gonna throw up or I don't know, my mouth feels really dry. I just followed my dad's advice. Come upstairs, have some fresh air and stay on deck. So that's what I did. And then I also chewed on a little piece of bread just to kind of distract my mouth and my senses. And uh, that helped a lot. Even sleeping on the boat has been super smooth. I actually really like the rocking sensation and I kind of miss it when I go back on land. So to answer your question, no, I did not get seasick. And I hope that I won't get seasick in the future as well. All right, welcome to the beautiful kitchen inside the boat. This is a really nice kitchen. It's really good size. It's very tall. I mean, it has to be tall. It's custom built for Captain and he's very tall. Question number eight is what do you eat slash drink? I had my assumptions as well about people on boats. I thought all you ate was tinned food, canned food. What about water? I have a water bottle. What the oh yeah. One um, week? Oh, no, no, no. I actually, I don't know. <laughs> what about water? I don't know. Because <laughs> you need water. But probably the guy has water. I hope so. I'm just thinking about this for the first time. Like, when you're on the ocean, it's like salt water. <laughs> you need water. <laughs> 
it's been a very, very nice experience so far. Like every single day we eat fresh food, freshly prepared food. This morning we are making pancakes. Yeah. We picked fruit ourselves. We picked oranges, quince, tomatoes. And then every time we can, we go on land to the local market, get fruits and vegetables, fresh bread. One thing we always run out of and that we can't do ourselves is bread. So when we do find bread, we get loads. Fish, we have a fishing rod here. We try to fish sometimes, but we haven't been very, very lucky in the last couple weeks. But we do get fresh fish whenever we go to the market. We get sardines. We grill them on the fire, and that's the best thing ever, to just eat them straight from the fire. We also preserve our own food. There's so much storage on the boat. Like most of the bunks have storage underneath them, and that's where we put like the cans and the tins and the jars. What did we jar? We jarred some quince, we jarred some tomatoes, sea salt. Sea salt is also homemade slash handpicked by the captain and then we just made it a bit finer. That was also a really fun activity. As per captain's instructions, I'm trying not to get it all over the countryside. And water. There's a lot of gallons of water on the sides of the boat on the deck. That's where all the fresh water is kept. And I think he said when the boat is gonna cross the Atlantic, there's over 600 liters of fresh water on the boat. This is something that I was really surprised by when I came, by how much space and storage there is. Look at this, lots of little onions. Overall, the food has been amazing. <gasps> yes, these. We've been eating a lot of these as well. And another very, very common question that I've been receiving is how do you charge stuff? Like, how do you charge your electronics? I have my camera batteries, I have my phone, and how I charge them, it's very simple. We have two solar panels on top of the kitchen, and uh, that's how we do it. Using the sun. So yeah, very, very sustainable way of traveling and living. Question number 10. This is a very, very highly requested one. Anushka, can you help me film this one? All right, come over here. Question number 10 is, how do you use the bathroom? And the very simple answer to that is... Ta-da! <laughs> Actually, there's three ways. So one is, you know, just the external environment. <laughs> uh, we just use, you know, the sea. When we're anchored, we can also go on land. Then we have option number two, which is the drop and shoot. I'm gonna show you, come along. <laughs> Follow me. We have option number two, which is called drop and shoot. No, shoot and drop. <laughs> the shoot and drop. How do you call it? Drop shoot. Go. No, you shoot first. Boom. You shoot first, right? You shoot and then you drop. You aim and then you drop. <laughs> aim and drop and you drop. And then you and have you this one here. Dudes, that's a night watch bucket. That's what you do at night when, there's, when you're sailing along and there's nobody on board. You can't go in the back, it's too dangerous. So you do this and you chuck it overboard. Thank you. And there you have it, the indoor toilet, which we never really need to use. And this leads me to the next question, which is, how do you shower? The good thing about being on a boat is you can just go for a swim anytime. Okay, I'm just gonna go in. Why am I so nervous to go in? <laughs> this should not be so difficult. Why is it so difficult? It's so, so mental. I literally feel like I'm going cliff jumping or something. It's not even that high. However, what we do is we always rinse off with fresh water when we get back onto the boat to rinse off all the seawater. I've also used a shower on a camping grounds once and showered on the boat. There's plenty of water, we just heat it up in the pot and then pour it over your head. It's a really nice way to shower on a, on a boat. This is the best and the only way to dry your hair. Last but not least, I'm gonna come to the very, very front of the boat to answer this one. How long will you be staying on the boat and uh, are you gonna be coming back? This is a question that I don't even know that I have the answer to for sure. Honestly, I don't really know. I came here thinking I would be here for a week and it's been almost three weeks now that I've been on the boat. The original plan was to come here for a week, see if I like it, try sailing for the first time, just join on the first leg of this journey, which was basically the whole coast of Portugal. I enjoyed every single second of this adventure. I have so much to learn still and I've just had so much fun so I might 
I might come back. If you want to help me make a decision, please comment down below. What should I do? Should I just go on other adventures, go to different countries? Or should I come back on the boat in a couple months and cross the Atlantic and go to the Caribbean? Either way, I'm really excited because I'm going to have lots of really fun videos coming. I hope I answered all the questions. If you have any more, please leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer all of them. Until next time, subscribe, have a great week, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye. Anushka's just making fun of me behind the camera. <laughs> just wait, Anushka. Just wait. You're gonna be introduced very soon. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there.